Over the last couple of weeks, I have been stalking and creeping some of my favorite people in the Instagram and YouTube space, and I have gathered eight makeup tips, tricks, hacks, whatever they may be. Eight things that I, in my recent memory, have never tried before, which means that you may have not tried them before either. So today we're taking a deep dive into those eight tips from some of the most fabulous people in the beauty space, and we're gonna see how they work on this face today. Tip number one comes from the fabulous video that Lisa Eldridge, beloved Lisa Eldridge, did with the one and the only Victoria Beckham. And there's a few tips actually that I gathered from that one video alone, but the first one being mixing your foundation with your moisturizer and using that as your base. Now this could be pretty game changing for those of us with dry skin. I don't know why I don't do this already. I have very, very dry skin. And this allows you to not only sheer down some of your more full coverage products, but also just adds another kick of hydration in there. And might I just toss it out there that this could potentially remove the need for a moisturizing primer? Is it too soon to say that? <laughs> so let's put that to the test. I've put no primer on my skin. All I have is the moisturizer. This is the Kate Somerville Delicate Recovery Cream. And I'm also gonna be mixing it with my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. So I'm gonna mix this magical little concoction in the palm of my hand to get it nice and toasty and warm. I'm taking a dollop of the moisturizer and a pump or oh, two. Let's do two to be safe. I wanna get nice and down my neck. Um, I have this in the shade 200. And one thing that I'm endlessly fascinated by when it comes to makeup artists and makeup pros is their ability to use the like classic paintbrush style foundation brush. And I love watching them apply foundation with this. So I figured I would pull mine out. This is a Westman Atelier brush. I'm just gonna take that and mix it in. Wow, you know, that looks really pretty and nice when all mixed in. This might be a really good combo. And I'm putting this in the palm of my hand to kind of just warm it up a little bit. The back of my hand is ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm going to brush it on. Wow, okay, okay. That's actually like, I might have to take some of that off. The, the Fenty don't play no games. So I'm going to brush that on. I mean, it definitely already like feels so much more mm, juicy and cooling on my skin, I've gotta say. And maybe because we're shearing out this foundation, that will make it easier applying it with this brush and maybe just an overall more natural feel. That's that's my assumption with the moisturizer. This looks amazing. Let's take a closer look. Guys, what? Usually I have such a problem when it comes to using these foundation brushes, but I think because we use such a small amount to start with, which is what every good makeup artist seems to do and I just don't follow on a daily basis, um, yeah, it just made it so much easier, but this looks fantastic. Mixed with the moisturizer, everything just seems to be like soaking into my skin so much more. Oh my. Like I've got no streaks left over from this brush. It all just totally seamlessly blended in. That's crazy. Victoria Beckham's damn girl. That looks incredible. I am wowed. And even on my hand, it just looks so hydrated and much more wet looking. That just blended into the skin so nicely. I'm gonna have to try this with a few of my other foundation and base products just to see how some different mixtures go, but I think this could potentially become something that I do a lot more often in my base mixing concoctions. <laughs> Okay, so the second tip, hack, trick, whatever you want to call it, comes from the one and the only Katie Jane Hughes. I absolutely love her Instagram account. She is constantly posting so much beautiful and educational content. Her Instagram stories every day. She does IG lives, posts the most fabulous makeup looks, has so much knowledge to share so willingly with her audience. And I always learn so much whenever I watch her content. So one thing I notice she does a lot is, she might even not go in with the base first. I do that because I have a lot of redness and discoloration in my skin. So I always like to do a base no matter what, but she often applies her cream or liquid bronzing products before going in with concealer. And this is something that I'm just fascinated by. She's essentially like taking her bronzing product, warming up and contouring the face, which is essentially adding another layer of product onto the skin might be 
in itself, you know, adding some extra coverage there. And then in an effort to not overuse concealing and base products, she'll go in with concealer after the fact, after chiseling out and mapping the skin. And I always find that so fascinating to watch, but it makes sense because a lot of the times when I'm applying my bronzers, and cream products, I end up disturbing the concealer and the foundation and the base that I've put on underneath. But this kind of allows you to finish off your look and perfect your look later on after you've you've done everything else. So I just thought that was kind of cool. So we're gonna do that today. I'm taking this bronzer. This is the Nude Sticks Bondi Bay. I went a little bit low there. Just keep your foundation brush on hand to correct any of the mistakes you've made. <laughs> I try not to disturb my slicked wet hair up here, but also I gotta get it up there. That's why I have my brush on hand. <laughs> so once you've done this step, you already feel more complete. So I think that will allow you already to use less product when you're going in with your concealer after. So I get it. This obviously wouldn't be the case with powder bronzer. This would strictly be with liquid bronzer and liquid contour, but we'll see. We'll get to it when we apply the concealer. But I feel like this is something I could definitely put into practice more often. So the next tip is also from the Lisa Eldridge and Victoria Beckham video that they did. And Victoria Beckham, when she was talking about her contour, said how she uses the Burberry face contour stick. And I was like, oh my God, BB, no way, same. <laughs> so I've pulled out my Burberry face contour. I have the shade medium, medium number one. And the one thing that I wanted to try, I don't know if this is just a particular nose shape, but it's not something I usually ever, you know, intentionally do on my face. But she said she takes the contour stick and makes a little V on the tip of her nose like that. So that's what I'm trying today. Making a V on my nose. So I'm also going to contour the rest of my nose but I wanted to try the VB V on the nose. So I'm just gonna blend that out with my finger. I feel like this is just meant to give your nose the more button nose illusion. Maybe it just emphasizes the, the highlight at the point of the nose. I don't know, does that make my nose look different? Do I look more fabulous? Am I Victoria Beckham? I feel like this is just emphasize the fact that I have a crooked dip on the tip of my nose. So let's just, I don't feel like that did anything magical for my nose. God, I'm just realizing how crazy my nose is. Victoria, back up, why you do this to me? <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna continue on with the concealer. I'm using my Clinique Beyond Perfecting Super Concealer. And I'm going to attempt to follow in Kitty Jane Hughes's footsteps and use a small brush. But I have this little Sigma P84 brush and it's kind of like a thick kabuki-ish feeling brush. And I've just taken some of the concealer on the back of my hand and I'm gonna really attempt to spot conceal and only conceal and blend out where I need it. So I've got a big patch of old zits here. Around my nose, I have a lot of redness. And then following up from the nose, just right across my cheek and up into my under eye area is where I have a lot of redness. So like I don't want a lot of redness right here under my eyes. That's where I want to brighten and make my under eye look more awake. So that's why I do continue on with concealer here. Although I do feel strongly that we got a lot of good coverage and skin evening from our foundation base. And then I just warm it up and really press it into the skin with my finger, just around the eye area. And I find that that just helps to warm it up and push it more deep in there, sets it in nicely. So that act alone, I do feel like I used so much less concealer than I normally would, and it still did a really nice job of covering up the spots that I needed it to, which is great. I'm just gonna quickly dab on some highlighter. This is my Nude Sticks Hey Honey highlight, and I'm just gonna put that right on the tops of the cheeks, just following the tops of the cheekbones. Just blending that in a little and just putting some on the the new V tip of the nose. The next tip comes from the beautiful Jamie Genevieve. I absolutely love her makeup tutorials. She is hilarious. I love her voice and her makeup always looks insane. And she was doing a makeup look the other day where she talked about her natural beauty blenders, AKA the palms of your hands. And she applied cream blush with this part of the palm of her hand. And I was so fascinated. I had never seen anyone do this with cream blush, and I'm kind of scared to try it now that we've <laughs> somewhat perfected the base, but Jamie Genevieve, this one's for you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the Nicole Kidman memes of her clapping. Okay, and we're going to 
Maybe I shouldn't do both at the same time. <gasps> wow, oh my word. Are you witnessing? Is that like a thing that the shape of your palms like perfectly matches the shape of your falls? <laughs> I am shooketh to mine core. What a fabulous way to just, wow, it just like, it really did blend so easily. All right, Jamie Genevieve, that was magical. That is definitely a trick that I am going to utilize in my everyday life when I'm wearing cream blush. That was so easy. Okay, this isn't something that I had planned into the tips of the video, but you can take this as a little tip too. This is another Katie Jane Hughes thing that I've actually been doing a lot lately. And it's kind of in the same lines as the concealer where I'm using a smaller brush and taking my face powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush flawless finish powder and I'm just taking that and once I'm done applying all of my cream products I'm taking the tiniest bit with this little eyeshadow brush and just using it where I need it where I want to set in any products on my face so really focusing on the t-zone leaving all of the juiciness of the cream and liquid products on the face around this area where I want to highlight but for me I get a little bit too shiny on the forehead especially when I have my big studio lights bouncing off of it. <laughs> and the same thing with my chin. I just want to set in the product around this area and it just sets in very specifically where you need it to. So I love that tip and that's a little bonus for this bid. And it's something I've been doing a lot with my makeup lately, just using a little eyeshadow brush and a very small amount of powder to specifically set in where you need it. The next tip also comes from the Lisa Eldridge and Victoria Beckham video. I love that video so much. I learned so much from that bid. But she was using the Kevin Aquan contour powder. And very often when I contour, I use my flat stippling brush from MAC and I start right at the tip of my cheekbones to chisel and that works totally fine for me I have no problem with that but I just wanted to try the Lisa Eldridge method where she took a brush I'm just gonna load it up with this product and she flicked it she started at the edge of the area where you want to contour and flicked it in towards the face like that and that was the tip it was just a totally different motion it was just flicking it inwards towards the face and I don't know if I'll be able to notice much of a difference in application I feel like I might have to go back in over the blush maybe this was a mm, it was good before but I did just want a little bit of extra contour I don't know it feels so backwards like I automatically just want to sweep outwards but the purpose of this was to not bring too much product towards the center and inner parts of your face to keep the bulk of the product outwards and then just naturally flicking it inwards and just giving it a more naturally, I don't, mm, mm. I feel like that's a tip I'll have to try when I'm doing less of a creamy blushy day. I'm gonna have to go back in with my palms here and just mix that in a little bit more. <laughs> the next tip comes from the beautiful Nikki underscore makeup. She is an, an incredible makeup artist. I love everything she does on Instagram. All of the looks she posts are just incredible. You can always tell that it is a Nikki makeup look. She has a very distinct look and feel to all of her makeup. They're all just so fabulously blown out and soft romantic looks and she always posts a Sunday tutorial and does a full walkthrough of a makeup look which I love and she's actually the reason why I originally bought the soap brows back when I did she fully changed me on to the soap brows life but I've never actually done it in her way <laughs> the way I use my soap brows is I take my brow pencil I'm such a brow pencil gal I fill in my brows and then I go over with the soap brows but the way that Nikki does it is applying the soap brows First, she fully flattens it to the skin, flattens the hairs to the skin, and then goes in with the Anastasia Dip Brow, which is a product I have not dabbled with. I purchased it for the purpose of this video to try the proper Nikki eyebrow way, and that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna start with my soap brows. I'm gonna take a bit of Fix Plus. I'm gonna take the eyebrow brush. I bought the one to go with the Dip Brow, because, you know, I wanted to be safe and make sure I was doing it right. So I'm just getting some product nice and mixed up into the brush. Okay, so then we're going to apply the soap. I feel like this way really allows you to get that very lifted and feathery look with your brows. And then once we have the hairs all slicked, she goes in with the dip brow. I'm nervous to try the dip brow. I'm not really good at like drawing lines of hairs on my brows, 
but I'm gonna try my best right now. I'm just gonna be working off the back of my hand to try and have less product on the brush. But we're gonna go in and, and then she does this. She just kind of draws the hairs. Oh, see, oh my God, it's so dark and scary feeling. But she draws the hairs onto the brows like this and just like follows the slicked upwardsness of the brows. <laughs> How's that for vocabulary, guys? Ooh. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like it just makes it look so intense. Like I know that if I were to ever get my brows tattooed, like this is what they do. They just, you know, draw more hairs, but it's so, when I'm doing it, it always just seems so bold on the brows. I'm also just not graceful when it comes to drawing these lines. I am just making a mockery of her art. I don't really know how to soften those little balls I've put. I totally get it. I, I get it and I think if maybe if I practice more with these hairs, this is actually a much more effective way to use the soap brows if you're trying to get that feathery look. Like this process gives you that look much easier than than the way I do it backwards. I don't know, you guys tell me like, does this look normal or is it like too editorial? I feel like this would look fabulous in a photo, but looking at this, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, truly my brows have never looked more bushy and delightful. I think I'm gonna have to practice. I'm gonna have to practice with the dip brow. That was literally my first time dipping into it, but I have hope. I like the prospect of the Nikki makeup brow way. So the final two tips come from Celine Bern Bernards? 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 Celine B. She is so beautiful. Like it's breathtaking. The photos that she posts on the internet, her makeup looks, her skin, her knowledge, she's just an incredible, incredible makeup artist. I've been following her for years and I love her and I am just obsessed with her. And I was actually recently watching one of her YouTube tutorials where she was talking all about liner and the success of doing a graphic liner. And the two tips that she mentions are the polka dot method, drawing out polka dots and then connecting your liner in order to make them symmetrical and making your liner application a lot easier. And then the second thing she talked about and mentions a lot actually are the pointy Q-tips. So after watching that video and a few of her other tutorials I went and picked up some of these pointy q-tips that are perfect for cleaning up makeup now I don't think these are very necessary because I often do just use like a smaller brush with concealer and that's how I clean up my eyeliner and I think that both work perfectly but this is a nice way of not adding on any additional product under there it makes it maybe a little bit cleaner less concealer added onto the face so I thought that was a cool little tip, so I did pick these up to have on hand. And then I'm just gonna attempt a graphic liner like I've never attempted before. So I grabbed my little pointy liner brush. This is the Bobbi Brown Espresso Ink Longwear Eyeliner. I'm actually gonna start by applying a shimmery base. This is the Shiseido Aura Dew in Solar O2. And I'm just gonna apply that all over the lid taking a globule of it onto the back of my hand. I feel like it just helps melt the product and then I can like twist the brush and make it smooth, you know? So as Celine suggests, you draw polka dots following the line of where you want the liner to go. So I'm generally wanting it like from the, the tip of my eye duct to the bottom of my brow and then I want the liner to follow above my crease and about halfway. So I've made my little dots and then I guess the beauty of this is being able to map them out and trying to be symmetrical with them. Oh, oh dear. Let me get my pointy Q-tip. I made that dot a little too wide. So even doing this, like mapping them out first, I can see that this side, I made a lot shorter than the other side. So I know that the new dot, I want to come out a little bit further. And that way we can just totally fix it as we may before drawing the actual line. Now I'm gonna start by lining the lash line with this. I'm just going to then connect the dots. Wow, oh, that was really fast. <laughs> Okay, okay. The dots. Oh, wow. Oh my word. Okay, 
I mean, that looks a little whack. Like, I have to throw it in and make it a little bit thicker, you know? Celine, you magical woman. <laughs> Thank goodness for those little pointy cube tips, because that's a, that's a crooked line. <laughs> How do I look? Okay, so I've got to say, even though I knew that the connecting the dots liner trick existed. I hadn't put it into practice for such a long time, nor had I considered it for a more graphic, fun little liner look. And I have to say that these, these Q-tips were fabulous for getting into these little nooks and crannies that you just want to fix up. That was great. Celine, you're a queen. Thank you for showing us the way. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of that NARS Shockum shadow and just Stick some of those glitters right into the, the center of the lid for some more pop. And add some mascara as well as a lip to finish off the look. This is the Kevin Aquan Divine Lip Liner. And this is my Lancome Matte Shaker in the shade Completely Nut. You guys, a little birdie has told me that these are officially being discontinued. I can't even talk about that right now because I'm so upset. But here is one of my favorite nudes ever in one of my favorite formulas ever. All right, my... <laughs> All right, everyone, this is the finished makeup look. This is the makeup look I created using eight, but like nine tips that I have picked up recently from some of my most favorite makeup humans on the internet. So to those who continuously bless us with makeup knowledge, thank you so much. Let me know what you guys think about these tips, these makeup tricks hacks if you will what you think of this makeup look and if you try any of these tips definitely let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more if you guys have any tips to share with us please also bless us with your knowledge i would love to hear what some of your favorite makeup tips are i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much as always for watching and i will see you all tomorrow for a new one bye